Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. And apologies, we're having uh, lots of technical difficulties here today. So thanks uh, for your patience in um, uh, waiting for us to work through some things. Um, as many of you know, this week, 50% of our eligible population have received two doses of COVID-19 vaccine. This is a major milestone for our province. As well, over 80% of our eligible population has had at least one dose of vaccine and our epidemiology continues to be favorable. In light of these factors, I'm happy to say that we will be moving to step two in our reopening plan on Sunday, August 1st, 15 days ahead of schedule. For travel, this means that fully and partially vaccinated travelers have no testing or self-isolation requirements. Unvaccinated travelers and those who do not wish to declare their vaccination status can be tested on day seven or later and self-isolate until they receive a negative test result. Anyone who arrived in the province in the 13 days prior to August 1st can transition to the new rules. Restrictions will also ease within the province. At this time, there is no change in the requirement for mandatory masking in indoor public spaces. As indicated previously, this will continue until we are two weeks past the 50% vaccination mark, which would be the week of August the 9th, and is contingent on continued favorable epidemiology. Masking will continue to be strongly recommended by public health, particularly in those situations that are higher risk for COVID spread. And those would be indoor spaces where distancing might not be possible and where you may not know everybody's vaccination status. For formal gatherings organized by a business or organization, up to 500 people will be permitted outdoors with physical distancing and 350 people will be permitted indoors as long as physical distancing can be maintained. Personal gatherings are limited to the number of people that can fit into the space with physical distancing. Personal gatherings refer to those in your home, your cabin, your camper, for example. And if you can only fit 10 people with distancing in that space, then that's your limit. There will be no capacity restrictions at restaurants and, bar, uh, restaurants and lounges with physical distancing maintained. Dancing is now permitted everywhere. However, self-serve buffets are still prohibited. While we are thrilled to have 50% of our population fully vaccinated or doubly vaccinated, I am concerned about the 17% of the eligible population that have not yet had a first dose. In some areas, the first dose rate is as high as 90%, while in other areas, it is as low as 65%. The evidence in epidemiology elsewhere tells us that unvaccinated individuals now comprise the majority of COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. And furthermore, unvaccinated individuals give the virus opportunity to spread and potentially evolve into a more severe transmissible variant. If you are eligible for the vaccine without contraindication, there's really no reason not to be immunized. No one is too young to have severe illness from COVID-19. We have seen severe illness and deaths due to COVID-19 in young and healthy individuals. Even if you do not get very ill from COVID-19, you may very well be a link in the chain of transmission that makes someone you love very ill. You will need to be vaccinated to protect both yourself and your loved ones. Remember that children under the age of 12 are not yet eligible for the vaccine. They need those who can get vaccinated to help provide a strong community barrier against COVID-19. So do not delay getting the vaccine because you feel there is a low risk of contracting the virus or because you have no plans to travel in the near future. Other jurisdictions are seeing an increase in cases due to the Delta variant and spreading mainly in those who are unvaccinated. This could escalate and spread as restrictions are eased across the country. So please do your part and get vaccinated. We need to maximize the protection in our province. This will allow us to continue easing restrictions and reach our new normal. If our epidemiology remains favorable, we hope to lift even more restrictions in the weeks ahead. And getting the first dose numbers up will give us more assurance on the level of protection. So please visit our website and look for a vaccination appointment in your region. Visit your local pharmacy or check with your family physician to get an appointment for a vaccine. I hope you enjoy your weekend and stay safe and hold fast Newfoundland and Labrador. And I'll now uh, pass it back to you, Leslie, for questions. Thank you, Dr. Fitzgerald. We have 
five media register for today's call. The first round of the question and answer session will give each reporter the opportunity to ask one question and one follow-up. Following this, there will be a final round where each reporter will have the opportunity to ask one final question. Our first questions are from Peter Cowan with CBC. Please go ahead. Dr. Fitzgerald, you mentioned the 17% that uh, haven't been vaccinated. What are some of the measures that are being done in order to make it easier to get a shot? Uh, for example, some areas, there may still be long waits in order to get um, the, a booking in place, for example. Yeah, so uh, certainly, uh, you know, we are um, having conversations with the RHAs and the RHAs are working very hard um, to try to uh, increase uh, the availability of appointments. So um, some are doing drop-in appointments, uh, walk-in appointments. Uh, some are doing pop-up clinics in various places where, uh, you know, um, certain age groups may be gathering more. So uh, trying to reach those populations uh, that... Uh, uh, maybe haven't um, either been able to get the appointment or haven't felt the need to get the appointments, get their appointments at this point. So, um, so there are a, a few different things that are being tried in the uh, different regions, and um, I certainly would uh, ask people to be on the lookout for uh, notif notifications from the regional health authorities as to, uh, um, you know, pop-up clinics, walk-in clinics, that sort of thing. You mentioned that on August, the week of August 9th, you're expecting to lift the mask mandate. Uh, other places like Israel that were kind of early to lift their mask mandate has brought that back in, especially with the Delta variant. Uh, are you not concerned that removing that layer of protection, especially uh, when there are groups that still can't get vaccinated, may lead to the virus to be able to spread? Um, you know, that's certainly something we always are thinking about, um, and uh, I guess that's true for almost anything, really, that we do. So uh, we're watching the epidemiology very closely, and, and that, uh, you know, looking at the mask mandate on uh, the week of the 9th, that really is uh, contingent on favorable epidemiology. So obviously we're paying very close attention to what's happening elsewhere in the country uh, and what that means for travel. What we do know is that, uh, you know, the vast majority of the people from outside the Atlantic bubble that are traveling into our province are fully vaccinated. So that's very good news. And uh, um, so that, uh, you know, the risk is lower for importation um, than we have seen previously. Next questions are from Peter Jackson with the Telegram. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. There seem to be uh, more and more people who are latching on to the fact that some travel destinations uh, and, uh, and uh, cruises, uh, they won't recognize mixed doses. What, do, what can you say to people who now feel they should really try to get the same vaccine toy? So... The whole point of our vaccine program is to make sure that our population is adequately vaccinated to prevent the spread of disease within our population. And while I can appreciate that people want to be able to travel, it's been a long time, and I love traveling as much as the next person, but, you know, that is not the primary reason for our vaccination program, and we have to remember that. Um, we are um, recommending vaccinations the way we are so that we can get the maximum number of people protected as quickly as possible. What I will say is that travel anywhere within Canada, this won't be an issue. Um, mixed vaccine uh, doses are um, acceptable across, in, in all provinces and territories. Um, there are uh, some destinations now that are looking at uh, accepting mixed vaccine schedules, and I s expect that as time goes on that more and more will. Um, and as we get some evidence as time goes on, um, this will become less and less of an issue. So I certainly would say to those people that, uh, you know, the most important thing is that you get two doses of the vaccine, uh, and uh, I would encourage everyone not to wait um, to get the same one. Okay, thank you. Uh, and what is your take on Alberta dropping most of its pandemic measures and contact tracing? While cases are still on the rise, and is that something you would, uh, that could affect plans in this problem? So we've been talking about, and, and I've talked about this, uh, you know, uh, in previous uh, briefings about moving from what we call pandemic um, COVID to endemic COVID. So COVID that we have all the time that's that's uh, that we're living with, you know, that 
So, um, you know, it's not surprising that some jurisdictions have gone out to say that they're going to be moving in that direction. Um, I think, <clears throat> you know, as we've seen throughout the uh, throughout the pandemic, not everyone has done everything exactly the same. And uh, and I think, you know, we have to respect other other provinces and territories decisions and um, we'll be keeping a close eye on things. We'll see. We'll probably be able to learn from Alberta's experience in this regard. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how things go. We're keeping a close eye and um, and we'll uh, respond if needed uh, as we have to. Thank you. Our next questions are from Kellyanne Roberts with NTD. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, when the reopening plan first came out, it was noted that we were sticking to the date um, and in seeing the vaccination rates go up and to reward people. What do you say to some businesses that were looking for that time period so they could prepare for that next step? So I, I hope that, uh, you know, this is welcome news to anyone who, uh, um, who wants to uh, where whose businesses, I guess, may be affected by this. Um, I think, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we hit that 50% mark before we made any moves and any changes. Um, and uh, I think just um, trying, to, you know, once we, we got to where we wanted to go, once we saw that we had favorable epidemiology here, and I think, you know, we were all uh, quite pleasantly, I won't say surprised, but it was a, a Unexpected that we that we would still have the the same number of uh, the low number of case counts that we have. So I think all of that together made us move to this decision a little bit quicker. But um, you know we we have met all of the requirements that we that we set out when we when we put the plan in place. Um, but of course at that time we weren't expecting to be able to meet those requirements until August the fifteenth. And I think it's great that we've been able to meet them before. Uh, we're seeing releases now about walk-in clinics for those 12 to 17. Um, a lot of people still looking to get their second dose appointment in a time frame that works for them. Are we looking to add more walk-in clinics for adults? I think that, um, you know, the, it, those are logistical questions for the regional health authorities, but I, I'm sure as time goes on and as uh, we work through things, we'll see more walk-in clinics as time goes on. Thank you. Our next questions are from Noah Shepard with BOCN. Please go ahead. With travel restrictions easing, is there any concern that the rising case numbers in Alberta or and the United States will make their way here? Well, we always are concerned that any cases elsewhere may make their way here, um, but we're watching it very closely. We're um, you know, really keeping an eye on things and uh, seeing where it goes. The other thing we have to look at is not just about cases, it's about severity of cases um, and, you know, how many of those cases end up in hospital or uh, ICUs and, uh, you know, looking at our um, uh, healthcare capacity, which is, you know, the, the most important thing that we're trying to uh, maintain by keeping our case counts low. If we see that your vaccination uh, has uh, impacted uh, that and so we don't see as much in the way of severe disease, um, you know, then that's, again, that's less worrisome. So uh, there's a lot of things that we're keeping an eye on and uh, we certainly will continue to. Uh, but as I said, most of our uh, travelers and who are coming into the province right now are uh, fully vaccinated. And I think that's because a lot of them are coming home are Newfoundlanders who are coming home to visit their family and, um, you know, they are, um, uh, responsibly uh, making sure that they're keeping their families safe as well and they want to be doubly vaccinated before they get here. I think people need to remember is that we have a way to be able to protect ourselves and that's to get vaccinated. So get out there, get your vaccines if you haven't already done so. Um, encourage your friends to get their vaccines if they haven't already done so. Um, that is our the, the best tool in our toolbox we have right now to keep us all safe. Thank you. And I wanted to ask, we've seen efforts um, recently in Halifax of international ship crews coming into port and being vaccinated by public health officials there. I wondered, you know, given what we've seen in Conception Bay, are there any discussions underway about possibly being able to offer vaccinations to international ships coming through our waters? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so we have had some discussions about that, and uh, certainly, you know, uh, from our point of view, the more people that are vaccinated, the better, especially if these are going to be people who are visiting our shores. So, uh, yeah, we have had those discussions. Uh, there's been no opportunity to do so, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, to this point. Thank you. I will now go back to each reporter to see if you have one final question. I do understand we may be having some technical difficulties still, um, but we will uh, keep proceeding and hope those kinks get worked out. Uh, Peter Cowan with CBC, do you have a final question? I do, and that's about physical distancing. Uh, restaurants are going to be able to go back to full capacity, but a lot of restaurant owners say the need to keep six feet between tables has essentially kept their capacity at 50 percent. Uh, why do we still need to keep that physical distancing, and when do you expect to be able to allow restaurants, for example, to be able to go back to a full capacity? Yeah, so the physical distancing thing is, uh, you know, it is, uh, it's difficult. I know that, and I can appreciate that it is. Uh, I think as much as possible, we want uh, people for right now, while we're making these changes, to continue with that. As we get more and more people vaccinated, I think we'll be able, and as we see what the epidemiology is, as we make these changes, we may be able to make some, um, some different uh, recommendations with regard to that. So uh, I guess stay tuned, but uh, at the moment, we're going to leave it as it is with the, um, the caveat about uh, physical distancing. Thanks. Peter Jackson with The Telegram. Do you have a final question? Uh, yes, uh, just something with regards to masks. Um, you say that they're going to be highly recommended in, in particular situations, but there's not a lot of um, really guideline as to what those situations might be. Uh, are you worried about some people uh, lapsing into uh, sort of rather intense judgmental behavior? Well, I certainly hope that that doesn't happen. I think, if nothing else, I think over this pandemic, the way that we've approached masks, masking has uh, drastically changed on the whole. And I think people who, uh, you know, may have felt a bit self-conscious in the beginning are now feeling that, you know, the mask has really helped them through this year and, um, you know, kept them feeling healthy and and uh, so I hope we've really turned a corner on our attitudes about masks in that regard. Um, I think I know myself, I, I don't see um, myself changing that uh, behavior going out. And, you know, if you're out shopping and it's flu season, um, why not wear the mask? It's just one more layer of protection that helps uh, to reduce your risk of getting sick with any respiratory virus. And we're going to have lots of respiratory viruses in all likelihood circulating this fall, just as we always have. We, you know, didn't have a lot of travel last year. We didn't see a lot of flu. We didn't see a lot of other viruses. But I suspect this year as travel starts to creep back up, we will be we will be seeing those again. So these masks are not just going to protect you against COVID. They can protect against many other uh, viruses as well. So, and I really hope that people, uh, you know, don't judge um, someone else for making a personal choice on how to protect themselves. Um, that'd be like judging someone for wearing a seatbelt. I don't think that would be a reasonable thing to do. Thank you. Kellyanne Roberts with NTV. Do you have a final question? Yes, thank you, Leslie. Um, Dr. Fitzgerald, knowing our vaccination rate is so high, but a lot of people, uh, I'm thinking rotational workers in particular, that were vaccinated out of province aren't included in our current count online. What do you estimate our actual vaccination number is for residents of Newfoundland and Labrador? Um, so I think our numbers are fairly accurate. Um, you know, we have... Uh, with our travel, we don't have a, a really definit <coughs> definitive way, say, to look at rotational workers, for example, but through our travel documentation, we know that we have between five and 6,000 people who identified as a rotational worker um, through throughout the pandemic. Um, and so we know that uh, certainly um, within... Uh, throughout the vaccination process that we we've, we've had most if not all of those people identify for getting sh uh, the vaccine um, and we've even had more than um, 
more than registered for the first dose that has have gotten the second dose. So uh, it appears that you know people who may have gotten their first dose elsewhere have gotten their second dose here. So uh, while it's difficult to know that exact number, um, I don't think that it's you know the numbers of rotational workers for example, alone um, are not likely, you know, they're not high enough that it's going to change those percentages significantly. And the majority of rotational Thanks. workers have stepped up and got vaccinated, which is wonderful. Thank you. Um, just to note, if it's possible um, for media to get a breakdown of vaccination numbers by age demographic, if possible, please. Oh, sure. Yeah. Noah Shepard with BOCM. Do you have a final question? I do. What are the uh, restrictions or regulations around organizations or operations demanding proof of vaccination for entry? Um, so I, I, that may be better uh, directed to somebody with more knowledge of uh, the law outside of the Public Health Act. Um, so within the Public Health Act, we have a special measures orders that can mandate masking in public spaces. Um, I mean, there are, and even before we had the mandatory masking rule um, or order, uh, there were businesses that were requiring masks for people uh, to enter their to enter their uh, business. So uh, I know that people have done that, but w with regard to the legality of doing that, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm the right person to answer that question. Thank you. Sarah Smelly with the Canadian Press. Do you have a final question? I'm okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Fitzgerald, do you have any final comments for today? Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us and for your patience with as we work through our technical difficulties and uh, I just want to take uh, one last chance to uh, tell it to ask everybody to make the choice to get vaccinated. Um, you know there are uh, vaccine appointments available in all the regional health authorities but you can also check with your local pharmacy and uh, with your family physician uh, to see if they have a uh, vaccine and may be able to get you in uh, for an appointment as well. And take care and have a good weekend, everybody.